Kina here as we're going to talk about wrestling, Las Vegas, and wherever else is on our minds. So how are you doing? I'm doing great, Julian. Thank you for having me this evening. I really appreciate it. No problem. If it's evening over here, where are you on the um, United States? Are you in the East Coast or are you on the West Coast? I'm on the East Coast. I'm in Maryland. Oh, you're in Maryland. I'm in New York. <laughs> uh, okay. Same time zone. Probably a little up your way <laughs> i'm done with the cold weather we had some kind of snow earlier today i'm not sure if you had it in your way but we had snow today we've had a lot of wind and rain i guess like i'm in coastal maryland so it's probably just because of that it's very windy and rainy it doesn't really get cold enough to snow but it's just right. it just goes like right through you now how long have you been into your training as becoming a professional wrestler i've seen all the videos of you um the training art and matches. So I'll break down how long have you been training? Okay, so I um, I started like getting involved in wrestling like I would say maybe like two and a half years ago at this point. So I was just kind of like going around doing ring crew. I was managing, doing some ballet work, you know, dipping my toes in here or there. But my career actively started in January of this year when I went to wrestling school from then till March. And then with the pandemic, there was a little bit of a hiatus over the summer, but I had my first match in August. So that's kind of on the timeline of where we're at. So I would say four months actively having matches in wrestling. And I trained in January. What were some of the early struggles you had to endure when it came to training? Um, I think like the, the biggest thing for me is like, I always played sports and stuff growing up, but I wasn't like a very natural athlete at wrestling at first. So I really had to like make the extra effort to make sure I was like moving all right. Like I looked decent. I didn't look clumsy or awkward when I was trying to wrestle. That was something that was a big challenge for me in wrestling school was just like moving with intent. And it still is to this day. This, that's something I always work on because I just don't have like that natural like athletic presence where I'm <laughs> very smoothly so I mean and that, but that doesn't mean you can't do it right you just have to be aware of these things and you have to um improve upon them that was very challenging for me I kind of always knew that I wanted to do my gimmicks so I didn't really have like any challenges surrounding that a lot of the challenges I faced were figuring out what I was capable of as a wrestler and where I kind of fit and like what styles were like in my best to pursue improving upon, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Were you always like a wrestler? Like, right, oh, sorry. Let's, let's stay away from that. What else can we, you know, it's just trying to find where your little spot in the world is. Like, okay, I'm not a high flyer. Maybe I'm not a brawler. Wait, I'm kind of good at this pure wrestling thing. Let me see if I can develop that. So it's just finding your little spot is sometimes the hardest part. How did your how did your parents react when you first got into the business? I mean, I grew up watching one of my nieces. They felt fortunate in that aspect. I've run into a handful of people who did not have the support of their families, and just hearing their stories just makes me extremely grateful that I have always had the support of my family in anything I've decided to pursue, whether it be my my graphic design career or pro professional wrestling. So. <laughs> they've, they've always been very supportive. My mom and my aunt come out to watch my matches if they're anywhere close that they can drive to. So that's fun to have them there in the crowd cheering for me. <laughs> have they seen your first match yet, whether if it was in person or online? They were there. They went to it. They went. Oh, to okay, first. okay. <laughs> that was really. Cool. Um, although it's really interesting when you're wrestling, you're like so focused on trying to win that you don't necessarily like like the crowds there and you feel their energy, but like you don't always like see their faces, right? But like just knowing they were there 
was enough for me and it gave me a big confidence boost that I needed because you're definitely nervous before you have your first match it's like ever all the training all the practice all the practice matches all the mistakes like you know injuries whatever that have led you to this moment you're like it's finally here and then it happens right so it was nice to have their support there I really I could feel their energy and it was wonderful really awesome that they support you and with this journey that you're going to and you're going to have a lot more matches come 2021 and beyond what are some that are on your bucket list right now that you want to have in the future um i kind of try to like set like short-term goals for myself in wrestling to keep myself focused and moving forward and i feel like that's always been important but now more so than ever with the pandemic it's very important to not get stuck in it right <laughs> Especially, like, me is, like, starting my rookie year in August, right? Like, <laughs> so one of the um, goals I had for myself in January was by the end of the year, I wanted to have a match that would be on IWTV. And I have accomplished that goal four times, so I need to have a new goal, right? Um, going into 2021, one of my biggest goals is to have a match on, like, AEW Dark or, like, Impact Explosion or, you know, for Ring of Honor, for Women of Honor, just anything that would be, like, the next echelon. Right. Before, you know, the big time, right? Like to just keep myself moving forward. I think that's a great goal. I don't want to pigeonhole myself into like going one place or working one place or one person because I'm definitely open to all opportunities and all people that are going to be <laughs> my ability as a wrestler. But that is one of my this next year is to just move into that next year, like by the end of next year. You're also a graphic designer, and I saw a lot of your work, and I've liked, I like what I've seen so far. Um, how far in your life have you wanted to be a graphic designer? Well, I originally started like going to school for photography, and as I got more and more into that course, I realized, like, all right, like this is great, but it's not necessarily going to be lucrative for me and help me to support myself. And then, I, I mean, I've always kind of played in Photoshop and stuff up until that point. So I was like, let me start taking some design classes. And I really kind of fell in love with it because it allowed me to use all sorts of disciplines of art. Like I could use my photography, I could use illustration, you know, everything was kind of pulling into this one thing. So I, that's what kind of drove me into doing graphic design and I love it. I think it's so great. Um, <laughs> I just really like that I get to do something like outside of wrestling for a living that is expressive and creative and the line of work that I work in helps a lot of people. So it's like getting, it's like design work that helps make the world a better place. So that's always like really rewarding too. Um, it's great. I love graphic design. I think it's so much fun. And the promoters started to ask you, hey, can you design our card or can you design our banner yet? <laughs> yeah, I get it every once in a while. Um, depending on how busy my day job is, like I sometimes have the ability for freelance and I will definitely take on those projects because I think it's really cool to do wrestling related design projects as well. <laughs> I love doing like stickers and t-shirts and that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's as when I was first, like when I was going around doing like balleting and managing and stuff like that, I, I got asked that a lot, but now I feel like people are more interested in what I'm doing as a wrestler. So that's super cool. I'm all about that. Like, see <laughs> me like the, the designer is just a skill I have, but I'm really, I'm here to wrestle. So. <laughs> Now, how long has it been, how long did it take for you to have your first match? I know you had it in August, but how long did it take for you to prepare? Well, I kind of found out, like, I got booked, like, a couple of weeks in advance, so I had some time to, you know, just kind of, at that point, what I was really concerned with was getting back in the ring and doing some training, because we had all been on pause since right. March. <laughs> it had happened, right? So, like, there was no gyms, no schools, none of that. So, I started, um, I moved out to Maryland from I was living in Iowa. I trained at Black and Brave originally. And now that I'm back out this way, I train up at Worldwide Dojo in Bristol, Pennsylvania with Sumi and Cheeseburger. So I started going up there, just trying to like, you know, continue to get better, fill some holes, like, you know, um, smooth out some rough spots I had and, and really just make sure I had done everything in my power to be as prepared as possible. But I think that there's no way to be 100% prepared for anything in wrestling because you never know <laughs> until you're in the ring. You can plan everything out. Like, you can have it all down pat. You can train your life. And you never know when a curveball is going to hit you. So you just have to be able to roll with the punches. And I think that that was the most unsettling part for me was I was standing there and I was like, oh, my God, this is it. This is my first match. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. Mom, I'm doing it, you know? But 
in your head, you're just like, you're trying to remember everything. You're trying to remember all of your training and like, and have the confidence that you can do it without doubting yourself. So it's like, (laughs) you know, you, you try to prepare, but you just, you just kind of have to go for it. You just have to do it eventually. Like you just have to like jump in because however it goes, is going to be a good experience for you and the other person. Everyone's going to learn from it. So. Now, where did you go to school? I went to wrestling school at Black and Brave. In no, I mean, like, um, school school. <laughs> where did I go to school for graphic design? Um, yes. I went to Salisbury University, actually. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in graphic design and a minor in photography. Awesome. Freaking awesome. It's good to have a backup I love in, art. Case of, <laughs> in case of, of wrestling either doesn't work out or go another way. It's good to have a backup. In fact, Steve Austin had the best advice ever whenever he tells wrestlers that too. And it's great to see not only you, but everyone else in this generation doing exactly that. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, you know what? It's one of those things where like having that education and being able to have a career outside of wrestling has really enabled me to do the things in wrestling I want to do very easily. Um, it's allowed me to save money up so I can travel and not be miserable when I'm traveling. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's allowed me to take opportunities that have come down the pike for me that, you know, maybe if I wasn't in as, a sta- as stable of a position that I wouldn't have been able to take, you know? So I definitely think it's really good. And especially now with like a little bit of extra time on our hands with the pandemic, like if you're somebody who's been wondering about whether or not you should pursue higher education, I would definitely encourage anybody in getting involved in wrestling that's young to, you know, take some classes at a community college. You know, if you, if you don't want to like go to college, college, you just want to like get some ex- education. Like it's, it's always good. It's never a bad thing to be educated i'm sorry my dog no worries i love dogs so it's totally fine with me <laughs> man why don't you um bring him on camera him or her <laughs> oh well he's playing fetch right now I'm, I'm staying with my parents at the time being with them i going on with covid so my mom and my dad have a lab and i have a pug and they are both playing and begging for food right now <laughs> i don't know if i can get him on. he's he's really into the toy i'm trying maybe i can get the young little one Looks like he's he's coming closer. Oh, I can hear him. <laughs> he's like, interview me. Here, come here. You're little. I can pick you up. Uh, this is my pug. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Hi, pug. Say hello. Hi. Let me put you down so you can get back to begging for food. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for that little segment. No, don't but worry. Yeah. I, um, I love dogs, so I don't mind. <laughs> But yes, education is always good. And it's very, very helpful to have things in your life outside of wrestling to not only make pursuing your wrestling career easier, but also to kind of give you some balance, you know, like as much as I love wrestling and as much as everybody loves wrestling, like you you need to have other things that enrich your life too, because then that allows you to love wrestling even more. Like if wrestling is the only thing you're dumping energy into, you're going to get burned out on it. Um, so that's why I'm so glad that I have like design. I actually like have a lot of hobbies that are not involving any kind of technology because I do graphic design for a living. I love to, I love to read. I love to ride my bike outside. Um, you know, just small. I've taught myself how to sew over the course of the pandemic. So I've tried to always have like different sorts of outlets to put energy into. Speaking about um, some of your hobbies, one of them was reading that you just mentioned. What was the last book that you read? The last book that I read was Punk Avenue by Phil Marcade. He was really? sort of like a dirty punk rocker dude from the 1970s in New York City. And it's like his, I, I don't know if it was like an autobiography, but it kind of just kind of chronicled he fell into that scene and like the experiences he had with people that were involved in that scene, like the Ramones and Nancy Spungen and all of them. So it's very, very interesting. I thought it was very interesting. At least. That was such an interesting time period in our history in general. And I, I like punk rock music a lot, so. I love rock music. In fact, why don't we just bring this up right now? What are some of your favorite bands, past and present? Oh my goodness, okay, currently. What am I listening to a lot currently? Um, if you were to ask Spotify, which I've had Spotify for like <laughs> 10 <laughs> my number one band is always The Misfits. I feel like I always go back to them. Um, one of my first jobs growing up was in a skateboard shop and they'd always listen to The Misfits. So I always, there's a lot of nostalgia around that for me. And I just like them in general. I love um, Iggy Pop and the Stooges. Awesome. Like, I love the Stooges <laughs> so much. Fun House is one of my favorite records of all time. Um, what other music? I listen to so much music. It's crazy how much music I listen to. 
Yeah, my uh, playlist those is... Those are, like, two of my big all-time favorites. <laughs> my playlist is playlist. way too long. <laughs> way too long. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. This year, I really got into this band over the winter, um, Bass Drum of Death. I really like them a lot. They're awesome. They're kind of, like, garage rocky, modern, super clean, but still gritty, lo-fi sound. Love that stuff. <laughs> now, I have you selected that. any of your favorite bands as part of your entrance music? Um, I actually use Fleetwood Mac as my entrance music because I, I love Fleetwood Mac, believe it or not. They're <laughs> incredible. Um, I do a good witch gimmick. I love like my, my look itself is kind of modeled after like a more modern version of Stevie Nicks. And I just, I love the vibe that the music has. My current entrance music is The Chain. I just got to learn about Rage Against the Machine, but I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're still one of my, they're still one of my favorite them. bands. <laughs> They're awesome. Very good. Now you recently went to Vegas and I was there with my lady about four and a half months ago. And I want to talk about Vegas. How was your experience when you went there? I was only there two days. Um, but I remember as soon as I got off the plane, it was just a lot. Is that a fair statement? <laughs> like there's just a lot going on. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of cars. There's a lot of noise, lights, buildings, like arenas like monuments it, you know it's it's a lot it's a lot um you, but it was you got a chance of, to go to fremont street i did um we did that we did like a little tour like we all got in the car and like just we knew we didn't have time to like go partake in a lot of the vegas activities so we did a little mini drive around the city we did fremont street i actually stayed on the strip which was kind of cool so that was <laughs> fun um so we got to see the strip. We went and saw the sign, the Las Vegas sign. And then they like took us by like the airport where they have like the secret area 51 planes that like leave three days, three times. Yes. <laughs> All that um, and we got to see, oh, I can't think of the name of it. Like the new arena that's like the pyramid with the giant. Uh, Luxor. Yeah. And we went by Mandalay Bay and all that stuff. So it was cool. But it's just, it's so much. It's so overstimulating. I'm a very low key person. Like when I'm not wrestling and being loud and doing crazy wrestling, things, <laughs> I kind of like to like be alone and like relax. <laughs> That's insane. So it was a lot for me, but it was fun. You know, we got to see all the important things. We went to dinner a couple of times. Um, but yeah, I was there to wrestle. So it was more like I was there. I had Friday night to kind of see a little bit. I played some slot machines. I'm not a big gambler. <laughs> right. <laughs> so on Saturday, I spent most of the day just doing wrestling stuff. And then Sunday morning, I had to fly right out. But it was really cool to see. Like, it's very different there. Like, all the palm trees had Christmas lights in them. And I thought that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I love about um, Vegas is that there's no humidity over there. If you go there in the summer, um, you will not feel it. Even in the winter, like it was, it was a little cooler because I, I shocker, it's cold in the desert, right? I'm so glad I brought a coat, but um, yeah, like I noticed that it's very dry. Even the cold is like, it's not like a wet cold. Like in Maryland, it's very like wet and like windy and like just kind of goes right through your bones, but like they don't have any of that there. It was very, very nice actually. It was very nice. I really enjoyed the lack of humidity. <laughs> <laughs> One day when you go back in this, one day when you go back in the summer, I'm gonna warn you to bring suntan and a lot of water. I mean, even, oh, even yeah. though it's, even though it's a no humidity over there, it's still hot, but it's not as unbearing as it is over here in the East Coast, especially in New York. Well, when I was in wrestling school at Iowa, like it snowed. I was there from January to March. It like snowed every day, like oh every God. day, just. <laughs> Dump snow like we were just forever shoveling snow and it's it's very cold there but it's it's weird right because you know i was saying like it's really cold in maryland but it's like windy and it's wet it's like not super windy there and it's not like wet so like you go outside and the air is cold but it's like cold and dry so right. i don't know if it's like better or worse i think it might <laughs> actually be a little bit better i really don't like the wet cold that's my least favorite <laughs> <laughs> now let's go back to your training real quick since you've um, started way back earlier this year, were there any points where a lot of the other seasoned trainers played ribs on you? Oh, actually, like, they were so focused on making sure we would be able to do what we needed to leave there and do safely and confidently. They, they didn't um, play too many jokes on us. They take it very seriously. But I appreciate that because it is something that's very, very, you should take it very seriously. 
they um they used to make us do a lot of burpees like if people were late or if people were like not listening or if somebody was like, <laughs> slacking attention I mean they could find a reason to make us do burpees it's kind of like in the military with push-ups you know like they just make you do push-ups to watch you do push-ups it's like yeah so like but, but that's so good though because you need to have that sense of discipline when you're pursuing something like wrestling because it's very serious and you know, you're working with other people that are putting their trust in you to be able to do things safely and do this without a hitch. And if you're not paying attention when you're being trained, like that's dangerous. So I get it. I'm glad that I had that experience there. I think that it's a very good experience to have. I'll tell you one rib that was got on me about seven years yeah. ago when I used to uh, be not only be part of Ring Crew over there, but also cover their shows. Cause the first day when I was mm -hmm. over there, I came in there, I'm me being a media analyst and writer, I was like, oh my God, this is this is so surreal. So then I helped them and the promoter um so while well, I was just as I had camo shorts on and I had a Matt Hardy shirt on. And then the promoter says, Everybody for the rest of this show, this effing guy's name is Matt Hardy. <laughs> oh, man. Just and I thought stuck. that was funny. <laughs> It is. You know, it's so funny, though, because, like, we have, like, this culture in wrestling now where we ridicule people for being fans. We call them marks or whatever. I think that's what it is, right? And to me, it's like, why wouldn't you want to be a fan of something you're pursuing? You know, I think there's, like, an extreme to this, right? Like, you don't want to be, like, an obsessive fan that drives yourself to the point where you dislike everything. Yes. But I think good to be a little bit of a fan like you know I still wear my wrestling t-shirts like I love wearing wrestling t-shirts that are my friends now like their shirts that's fun <laughs> and I love wearing like my stone cold shirt like I'm a wrestler but I'm also pretty much a big fan of wrestling and I'm proud that I'm a wrestling fan and I and I love people that are fans of my wrestling so <laughs> I don't know I don't think anybody should ever be ridiculed for being a fan you know but that's just me I would never make somebody feel bad about wearing a wrestling t-shirt in any capacity. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> people walk around with football jerseys on. How many people do you see like a football jersey that says Tom Brady on the back and it's like, okay, dork, like, but I can't wear a wrestling t-shirt? Like, all right, <laughs> get out of here with that. I actually exactly. feel like wearing wrestling t-shirts is more socially acceptable than like being a football fanboy, but that's just my humble opinion. <laughs> And the football season is going to end in a few more weeks or so. Yes, I'm a huge Washington fan. So oh, yeah, Washington fan? I've had a good couple of weeks. I'm pretty happy. I'm very happy for them. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm Patriots and uh, Jets, so, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Jets have not had a great season. No, they have not had a good season. <laughs> <laughs> have plenty of Super Bowls. They're fine. They're fine. Don't worry. They have one bad season. Nobody, nobody cares. They're fine. <laughs> So what are some of your favorite childhood memories? Oh my goodness. I remember like, this is like, I don't even know, it's not even a wrestling related memory, but I remember my aunt used to babysit me a lot growing up when my mom had to work late. And she would always like take me on little car rides just to get me out of the house. And like, sometimes she would get me like milkshakes and stuff. And she'd always listen to the clash in the car when she would do that. So like, every time I hear the clash, I always think of going to get milkshakes with my aunt. Um, but I also like growing up at the beach, I have a lot of um, beach centric memories. My family used to like go camping on the beach when we were kids. So that's always like a good childhood memory. I remember my mom taking us to wrestling when we were kids, like and just being like such a good mom, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like and just like getting us like trying to get us closer and like taking pictures and like letting us bring the signs. Like she was so cool. Like that's a good memory I have. I think it's kind of cool that like I get to wrestle now. I've always wanted to do it. So those are a couple really of my good. Yeah. Who are some of your favorites um, that you were watching when you were growing up? Um, I really like Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, I grew up in a redneck family, not going to lie. So everybody no, loves Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? Um, so I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. I love The Rock. I love China growing up. I like Dean Malenko. I really like Luna Vachon, actually. I think she's so awesome. There's a lot of people soul. from that, that time period like that I really enjoyed watching, you know? And it just... I just really enjoyed watching wrestling as a kid. I remember it's so cool, right? Because there's so much wrestling on these days. Exactly. Like, when I was a kid, I just say, like, I'm making myself sound old. When I was a kid... But when I was a child, like, you would sit on the couch and you would wait for Monday Night Raw. Or Every WCW week. Nitro. 
You wait for Nitro, yeah. Or um, or like Saturday, right? You wait for Superstars or whatever was coming on Saturday. Yes. Um, but you would wait, and you'd have to wait all week to find out <laughs> what happened to Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, like wait all week to find out like what's going on with China, what's going on with Eddie Guerrero. Like you couldn't just like look on the internet. Like you were just sitting in this ball of anxiety, waiting week to week to week to week to week to find out what happened on wrestling, right? So. That's kind of like a cool wrestling centric memory I have. It's just like being so excited to watch, not knowing what was going to happen, not having any clue about anything else that's going on other than what was fed to me through the TV. Like I kind of miss that sometimes. <laughs> Trust me, I miss that as well, especially when I was growing up watching wrestling. The next, you know, I'll go to the next day at elementary school. We talk about it. What happened on Raw? What happened on Nitro? Do you guys hear what was going on in the ECW? It was, it was wild at that time. Oh, yeah. And, and like, there was no internet. I mean, there was, like, America Online, right? The dial-up so connection. Netscape. <laughs> Net, Netscape or whatever. But, like, there was not internet like we know it today. Like, you couldn't just get information. You couldn't just, like, go to YouTube. I was talking to a friend the other day. This is a really interesting wrestling conversation. My friend Ashley and I were chatting. And we were like, man, all these guys that, like, came up in Ring of Honor in, like, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, like, how did they get there? Because there's, like, there was no YouTube. Like, the internet existed, but not as we know it today. <laughs> like, cell phones did not have, like, good video capabilities. No, they didn't. In that time period. So it's not like you could tag your buddy and be like, hey, brother, I'm having a match. Can you record? <laughs> When I asked this question in wrestling school to Seth Rollins and Merrick Brave, because they were very much on the scene at that time, right? How did you guys do that? And they were like, we just like every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're like double dipping, working two shows a day sometimes, like just driving everywhere every weekend. And it was like the same small cluster of people. And I was just like, that's so crazy because like people complain nowadays about having to drive like four hours to go somewhere. <laughs> so, um, and it's just wild to think how it's like evolved so much, like with tools like YouTube and social media. Like, like Hulk Hogan didn't have Instagram. Like, you didn't know where Hulk Hogan was. You didn't know what Hulk Hogan was eating for dinner or what he was doing. And you certainly, like, couldn't find Hulk Hogan. He was, like, this larger-than-life superstar, right? And, I, and, like, things that we miss, right? I sometimes miss, like, wrestlers feeling like they're larger than life, you know? You, you know, I, I probably would not want to know what Hulk Hogan was doing on Instagram in 1987 or know oh, where he man. was. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord i would not want to know it's based on the stories i i've heard a lot of wrestlers in the 80s <laughs> i would not yeah. want to know so that's really cool too is they actually when i was in school spent a lot of time of like teaching us like the importance of like being in good shape like taking care of your body like stretching like how do you know rehab small injuries like eating food that's not crappy and not going to destroy your insides you know like they they really placed an emphasis on like keeping yourself healthy for the long term which i thought was nice and obviously a huge swerve from the 80s right? yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord now my final question <laughs> granola loving people now our bodies are temples kind of <laughs> you know <laughs> Now, my final question for you, what are some things you are looking forward to for 2021? And also, where are some places you would love to travel to once this whole restriction starts to either get lifted or ease down? Let's see. I've got a couple of things I want to check off the list in 2021. Um, I know I'm starting 2021 off strong. I, am, I partake in this show that occurs on IWTV some camp leapfrog matches coming up in 2021 i'm pretty excited about i have um we have a show coming that's airing christmas eve actually christmas trios so it's like a trios tournament featuring eight teams of campers so that'll be fun check that out oh that i will so that'll carry you. Hmm? no i'm saying that i will <laughs> yeah it's awesome it's it's so fun it, it's like such it's so escapist it's not like anything else out there going on in wrestling right now um, I would say the closest thing would be like when Impact did Russell House. So it's kind of like that, but like better and bigger, if you can imagine that. <laughs> it's fun. Um, so I have some of that stuff carrying into 2021. I definitely want to continue cultivating 
Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to just, you know, go wrestle some different places. I mean, I'm central to, I mean, I don't have to, right? Like, you know, where I'm located, it's very easy to have a show every week in like New York, Pennsylvania, Jersey, wherever. There's always something running, sometimes four things on one day. But I really would like to continue. Like, I'd like to go back out West. I'd love to do like championship wrestling from Hollywood this next year. I think that would be fun. Um, I would love to go wrestle in Texas. I've never been to Texas. It's a completely different group of people. I think it's so cool to just go wrestle people from different ponds because you learn so much. That was one of my favorite things about going to Vegas was just being around a different group of people <laughs> who train differently and wrestle differently. Like, you know, when you're stuck in your pond, you never grow. So I'd like to go down to Florida, maybe and wrestle. That would be fun. I haven't wrestled in Chicago yet. I would love to hit Chicago this year. That's Ooh, on my list. Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, That's a yeah, so great like, place. <laughs> it's an overarching goal to like get out, you know, like not be in my pond, not take the easy booking because it's like an hour up the road. Like, you know, take the one that makes a little bit more effort, but I'm really going to get something out of it. I'd like to do some more seminars this upcoming year too, because I feel like every time you do a seminar with somebody, like you always learn something that you didn't know before. You always get like small nuggets of wisdom. I've not I've been fortunate. I've never done a bad seminar, so I always look for those. Um, but yeah, just to continue, like going new places and like learning from people that aren't from the area I'm from, because that's how you get really good. It's like if you just like stay with the same people, like you just do the same stuff. Like you're never, you're never gonna outgrow your little pond, right? Like right. You, you don't want to be the biggest fish in the small pond. You want to be in the ocean. And how do you get there? you leave the pond so <laughs> like expanding out of the pond and just keep learning from all different people pretty awesome and again i'm happy i've spoke with you today uh thank you for taking your time for the interview with the delhi ddt this will be up in a few more days and i hope you and every, your dog stays safe during this pandemic <laughs> Yeah, we're just hanging out. I think I'm just going to relax the rest of the year. You know, just get myself ready to enter 2021 with a good mindset. Yes, let's bury this year and never look back at it. I do not want to even look at 2020 ever again. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm already checked out. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again. Like, for come on, Christmas. Come on, <laughs> Christmas. Thank you again for taking your time to speak with me. This will be up in a few more days. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show. I really had a nice time talking to you this evening.